Hi, Bill here. I'd like to talk about the chess variant known as Kriegspiel. Kriegspiel is quite a good game, though it has the drawback you need to have three chess sets and boards and a referee. So you need three people, the two players and the referee. So the basic idea is the player who plays white has one board, the player who plays black will have another board, and the referee will use the middle board. So they're set up in such a way that uh, the white player is facing that way. The, the real board will be behind him so he can't see the board and the black player will be facing in the opposite direction. So neither player can see the other person's board or the, the board showing the real position. Okay, so the basic idea is all normal chess rules except you don't know exactly where your opponent's pieces are, well, at least most of the time. Though you can get information in dribs and drabs from the referee. So the best way to explain is to show you a sample game. So let's see... OK, so white makes e4 as his move. So the referee makes e4 On, on the middle board, because the middle board always shows the real position. And he announces to the black player, white has made a legal move. And of course, black doesn't know what it is, but he can try and guess. So let's say black plays d5. So uh, that, in fact, is a legal move. So the referee makes d5 on the middle board and announces black has made a legal move. And of course, white doesn't know what the move is. But there's a special rule that um, you can ask to see if there's any pawn captures. So there are none possible on the first turn, but now it's conceivable there are possible uh, pawn captures. So, um, and you're allowed to try up to three pawn captures per move. So the answer is yes, so the referee says try. So there's only two possible conceivable pawn captures after two moves. So White tries, he takes f5, hope that may be legal. If black had moved his f-pawn up on the first move, and the referee says N illegal. So, and of course, if you try a move and it's legal, you've got to play it. So white takes the, um, so white knows there's a pawn there. So white takes it, and that's a legal move, so it must be played. So, so white's actually worked out that this pawn has gone off the board, and it's good to, um, I'll just simply that square, it's good to always um, keep track of how many captures have been made. You, um, you don't know exactly what's been captured, but you do know how many pieces are captured, because when there's a capture, the referee announces White has made a capture. So the referee makes the real move on the real position. So White knows the real position because he's worked out the um, Black's first move. And um, and what the referee does is remove this pawn from the board and say white has made a capture. So, of course, black knows there is something white on the d5 square. And he does know it's a pawn capture because he heard, um, he heard white try for a pawn capture. So he knows there's a pawn there and he knows it's either the c pawn or the e pawn. So he might have got the real position. So he knows the pawn will be safe to capture, so he decides to take it. So the referee makes the uh, capture on the real board, and, and he tells um, White that uh, Black has made a capture, so White realises um, in two moves, the only way he could have taken it was with the Queen. So um, White decides to uh, move the knight out, that's legal. So the referee announces White has made a legal move, so he attacks the uh, Queen. So Black, if Black is an experienced Kriegspiel player, he'll know the Queen may be under attack, so it's a good idea to uh, move the Queen away to safety somewhere. So he decides to uh, move it back one square. So, um, so the referee makes the real move on the, um, on the real board and says black has made a legal move, now it's white's turn. So um, so white thinks, oh, 
maybe I could take the Queen next move, or, or may, maybe the Queen's not there, he doesn't know. So he elects to bring out another knight. Now, now what... Um, so the referee makes the move on the real board and says, why does it make a legal move? That now Blake decides to check. And uh, so what happens is the referee announced check and he, and he tells White, White is on check on the rank. So when you're in check, the referee announces, is it check on the rank, the file, on the short diagonal or the long diagonal, or a check by a knight? So a check by a pawn would be on one of the two diagonals. A check by a bishop or queen would be on one of the two diagonals. And every square on the board is either a short or long diagonal intersecting it, except for the corner squares, where there's only a long diagonal. So um, what uh, now, what's in a bit of dilemma here, because um, he knows he's in check by a rank. If he puts, if he's guessing the queen's on e4, he might just be exposing the knight to attack. And he doesn't know where the, exactly where the queen is. could be on any one of these three squares. He could play knight e5 hoping he takes the queen, but maybe he doesn't take the queen. Maybe the queen's really back on e6. So, um, so, or he could just bring a piece out. So, or, or say he takes a risk. Now, you wouldn't try this one before you try this one because you want to try the more distant squares first. So let's say he does try that, that and, and he's in luck because he, and the referee announces White has made a capture. And of course, Black knows what's captured. Black always knows exactly where his pieces are, but he doesn't know where the white pieces are. And um, White could work out he's captured the Queen because there's no way a Rook could have checked on, on the file that early in the game, so he can take this queen off the board. So, um, again, White knows the, the exact position. So, so, so Black, can, Black can play a gambling move here. So, let's say he, uh, given his queen behind, he moves the bishop out, hoping that the white queen's still on its original square, and there's a, f a fairly good chance it will be. So, the referee announces Black has made a legal move. Let's say, um, Let, let, let's say that, uh, so of course White, White's got no idea what he does. A, a good practice is to ask for any, because um, there may be a pawn capture, but uh, in this, this case there won't be any. So so let's say um, White moves his uh, queen out to f3. So White, White plays it on the board, and it's a legal move, so the referee plays it on the real board, so this is the real position, and announces why does make a legal move. So what Black tries to do, he tries to take the Queen. So he plays Bishop takes Queen, he says, is that legal? And the referee says no. So Black can work out there's something on the E2 or the F3 square. So he tries Bishop E2, is that legal? And he says no. So he knows there's something on the F3 square, but he doesn't know what it is. It could be a pawn, could be a knight. So what and pawns are quite valuable in this game because of uh, two reasons. One is there's a special there's a special try for pawn captures, which makes pawns good at taking things. And also, if a pawn promotes, often the um, unless it promotes with check or a capture, the opponent won't know the pawn is promoted. So let's say Black does uh, move move the bishop and and. The referee plays on the real board, and he and he says, "Black has made a capture." So now, now, White will be able to take it back because he knows there's a black piece on the square, but he doesn't know what it is. So, say if he he tries this move, and and Black says, "You have made a capture." So that Bishop will get taken off the board, and he tells Black, "White has made a capture." So I'll empty that square. And so the game goes on. So the games tend to take a longer than a normal game of chess. Though um, they can go for quite a while. Because you don't know where the king is, it can take a while to make them. If you have a big material advantage, you can often nurse that to victory. But you do. it is wise not to take risks and to keep things defended. 
The, the merit of this with your um, playing quick spill, the help this can give to your normal chess is help you to um, play safe and avoid unnecessary risk, for example, by keeping things defended. I'll, sh I'll show you a, what is similar to an actual game played in a national Kriegspiel championship. So what I'll do is I'll res reset all the games and um, I'll set to edit position so I'll be able to edit the positions. So in this particular game the, um, the player who played white noticed in the earlier rounds, because he'd seen the games, the black set up a defensive formation by by playing like a oops playing like a French defence and setting up the pawns like this. So he set up a very solid position. There's no chance of being checkmated by scholars mate because the bishop will be blocked on the diagonal. The bishop on e7 stopped stopped some kind of stray bishop going in and attempting to take the queen early on, and the um. And the and and it's difficult for the queen to attack the knight because uh, to take the, the black queen of the knight, if the knight tries to come in to here or to here to uh, attack the queen, the um, black will know there's been a capture and will we'll recapture on that square. So the queen's going to be pretty safe in the short term on the square. But um, the player's white no noticed there was a weakness in this setup and he was able to checkmate. So the game went, I'll just reset this. The game went something like this. So he moved the pawn up. So on the real board, they had this position. And Buck played d5. And then uh, white got the knight out. So black moved up his e-pawn. So um, then white moved the knight to here. So black moved the, the so black moved his bishop out. Then white moved the queen to here. Then black moved up his other pawn. Then white went checkmate. Okay, so, well, that was played in a, a National Australian Kriegspiel Championship, though the player who was black did go on to win the tournament. So um, that's just a bit of an introduction to the game of Kriegspiel. Quite a good game, though you do does take a lot of space. You do need to get the, uh, the sets lined up in the correct way. So you need three sets, three boards, and three people. And, uh, yeah, it's, you definitely want to record the games while they're being played. Because you can have a lot of amusement and entertainment by going through them afterwards. So thank you for watching.